All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at the vent decoders. I've got a couple here. This is the HU66 for the Volkswagen Automotive Group, the VAG Group. And the other one here is for BMWs. They're identical in construction. So some of you guys have noticed these on the vent site and asked me to do a comparison between this one and the Lisi Pigs. Now, I don't have an HU66. I ended up giving that away quite a while back, but I... I one I ended up buying was one for the American lock, but the design elements are exactly the same. So let's take a look at these and compare them because this one sells for 90 euros. It's about $100. And the Lishi, I think it was 65 euros, which is about $72. So I guess the question is, is this one worth $18 extra? Well, let's find out. Let's look at the design first. Now, notice right away that the Lishi doesn't sit flat and it's simply a, one of the design elements. They've chosen to use this round thing on the front here to hold the tensioning bar. It's nice and secure, I get it, but it doesn't like to sit flat. And because of that, I mean, you have to remember these are, well, they're, I think they're kind of expensive and they're pretty delicate. I've seen a couple of these damaged or actually broken. I've broken one myself, so, and I'll tell you how in just a minute. Um, but anyway, because of the design, it doesn't fit flat, it doesn't fit in a flat case, so... You really need to store it in this plastic box that they give you, and that will protect it and keep you from bending it or sitting on it and putting a, putting a kink right in the middle of it. The smart decoder, however, is flat. They've gone to a little bit of trouble here to just cut the groove in the side. Same tensioning. It works exactly the same. So functionality-wise, there's no difference whatsoever in that. But because it's flat, you can put it in this nice protective case they give you. It's made from pleather. And it fits in there and takes a lot less room in your bag. You can put it in your pocket, a lot more comfortable to carry this. So that's just one thing. Not a lot of difference in performance, just, uh, just in design. While I've been holding these, you probably noticed that this one is reflective. Now, they're both made from stainless steel, but this one has kind of a reflective finish. So pretty nice, very nicely done all the way around. And this one has what I call a satin, slightly dulled finish. So might not seem important, but for those of you guys who, uh, like, you never get called out on a lockout uh, in the middle of a bright day. Usually it's in the evening, it's dark, you know, very few street lights, very little light at all. So try to imagine uh, this guy here is not going to give you a lot of reflection. So even if you turn it back and forth, let me move this out of the way, you can see it might be a little bit difficult because the etching on this guy is a very light laser etching onto this satin finish. So it's not etched very deeply at all, and it's almost the same color, not a lot of contrast. Whereas on the Lockmaster, again, I'll move this guy out of the way, you see a couple of things. First of all, it's much more reflective, so you can kind of, just by moving it around a little bit, maybe be able to determine which wafer you're on or, or what the decoding number is. But more importantly, this is deep engraved, and then inside of the engraving, they've put black paint. So excellent contrast really is very nice we've also got what i call dual engraving now let's take a look here again assume that this is a car pick uh we're busy we're picking and we can see the decoding on the top so we're bang we got it picked we turn it we get the door open and then now we gotta we gotta read that code if you want to decode it, it's got to be while the lock is in the open position. So you got to bend your head, do some head gymnastic to look over there, and you've got to read it kind of upside down, kind of inconvenient. I mean, it works. These have worked for a long time. But, you know, typical Germans, they, they engineered something else into this one. Again, same situation. We got this guy in, we got it, we're picking along, we get it picked, and then we rotate it. And notice on the other side we have engraving. So no matter how this is oriented, if we put it in like that and turn it, we can read it here. If we put it in like that and turn it, we can read it there. So just really well, really well thought out. I mentioned earlier about broken pigs. Let's take a look at this guy again. Uh, when you insert or pull these out of the lock, you've got to make sure that that very delicate tip is down inside of the key cage like that. So it doesn't snag up on anything on wafers or pins or anything. So when you slide it in and then you can begin picking or when you're ready to pull it out, again, you've got to remember to kind of, you got to remember where that goes to line that up and then pull it out. I've seen too many locksmiths to get it picked, to get it turned, get it, the door open, flip it back and say, I'm out of here. I got my hundred bucks and then they yank it out. And then because they didn't center that tip and put it below the cage, they either bend or they break that very delicate, very thin material of that tip. 
Lockmaster thought about that. And on this guy, again, same kind of tip, got the same cage, except on this one, notice we have a little slot. See the needle in there? We have a little slot that the needle fits into. And once you put it in there, even if you bump it, it doesn't jump out of the slot. So all you got to do is just when you insert it or retract the key, make sure that little peg is in the slot and that way you know your tip is going to be protected and you're not going to leave it hanging out there and break it or bend it. Since we're talking about slots, you notice this one has slots for all of the wafers. And it's another characteristic of the Lockmaster picks. On the Lishi, we don't. So again, it's at night, you're having trouble seeing, low light conditions. You've got to make sure that that very small needle is lined up with that wafer or with that pin. And you line it up right on the line, and then while you rotate it through that kind of semi-arc there, you've got to make sure it stays lined up. If you deviate a little bit, in other words, you can't see because of low light, you might miss the pin altogether. So kind of difficult. You really got to pay attention with the lychee. Again, those German lock engineers came up with this idea to help you do it. Even if you have no light, you can slide it into the slot. You know exactly where you are. And then before you move to the next slot, you bang against that little bar and you can slide over and bang. It goes right into the very next slot. It's very precise. It's indexed on the wafers or on the pin. So again, really well thought out. Great idea. I don't know why Lishi didn't do it, but they didn't. But Lockmaster certainly took advantage of that uh, design. It's not really a flaw, but kind of an oversight. So I've got to say, yeah, so far I would say that this is worth $18 extra and perhaps a little bit more, but we won't really know until we find out how well it picks. So I've got a couple of locks here. I'm going to go ahead and figure out which one of these is the one for HU66. Put it in a vise. Let's see how well it works. All right, I'm trying not to pinch that actuator. I think that ought to hold it. All right, let's see if we can get this guy picked. Uh, let's take our HU66, and what I'm going to do is make sure I'm in the slot that puts the tip inside of the cage, and then should insert very cleanly. There we go. Fold up our tensioner, and now I'm going to let you see just this part, I think. I think I can zoom in a little bit here, and I believe you guys can make out. should be able to see everything. Let me put a piece of... A piece of white paper under there so you guys can see, I guess, where where I am. Makes it a little easier. All right. I take it out of the lock position and I apply a little bit of pressure with my thumb. Not too much. And just look to see which one starts binding. I felt a little click right there. And that one's completely free. That's completely free. Completely free. Got a little lock up there. A little click. A little resistance there. And I'm getting counter rotation, actually. There we go. That's not going to get go anywhere. A little bit there, a little click. Another click on eight, so he'd pop back. So just picked him out of order, no big deal. Resistance again on five, a little counter rotation. Nice click. Now remember, some of these wafers are going to have more than one gate, so try to keep track of which one. I felt a little turn there on three. Try to keep track of which ones you think you have picked, and there we go. That's how easy that is. All right, what I'm going to do now, because it is picked, let me rotate a little bit further. I'm going to loosen up the vise and show you how to decode it. So I'm turning the lock now. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me just get the vise completely out of there. All right, so here's how we decode it. You have to decode it. Again, I'll, I'll leave that white paper there. It might be a little easier. Unzoom so the autofocus will work. All right. What we need to do, you can see the pointer. Now, what I'm going to do is just take it up, and you see the lines. We know we're on wafer number eight. And when we slide the little point up, it goes up to one of those lines. And the line it happens to go to looks to be cut number. And you got to follow it all the way across. So that's cut number one. And get the reflection right there. And on the bottom part of that wafer, it is cut number, looks like two. And then we move to wafer seven. That's a cut number, looks like about a two. And then that's about a, looks like a three. I'm trying to do this through the camera, so forgive me if I'm not right on the mark. Uh, number six, we got cut number two. And on the bottom, we got a cut number one, and so forth. You just move down, and eventually you get the cuts on both sides of it. You write it down, you go to your key cutter, and there is the... Uh, Silka card number that they, or the key actually, that they need to use 
to cut this code. So very cool tool. Is it worth, let me rotate this back around, center my tool, and extracts very cleanly with no damage. That's a first. Anyway, guys, is it worth 18 bucks? I'd have to say, yeah, definitely worth 18 bucks. I really like the reflective finish. I like the high contrast of the numbers on here. It makes it easy to read. And I also really like the idea of being able to read the code from either side of that. That alone, that feature alone is probably worth more than the $18 price difference. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. The giveaway this week will be these two brand new decoders, the HU66 and the HU92 Smart Decoder from Zyfix or from Vent, along with the cases. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe, stay legal. Stick around, and I will show you how to win. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, purple band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.